This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Public Broadcasting presents the 2009 Georgia High School Association's State Basketball Championships. Funding for this program is provided in part by Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, the Georgia Student Finance Commission, Regions Bank, the Georgia Lottery, by viewers like you, and the Georgia High School Association who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge Dealers State Farm, and Naturally Fresh for their support of GHSA athletic activities. Live from the arena at Gwinnett Center, it's the 2009 5A Girls State Championship as the Redan Lady Raiders at 26-0 out of Region 2 take on the Marietta Lady Blue Devils 25-7 and out of Region 5. And a good evening, everyone. Dave Garner alongside my broadcast partner, Dick Williams, and looking forward to a great matchup here in this 5A championship. This should be a very interesting matchup. You know, it's almost been a DeKalb County uh, day today. We have another team from DeKalb County, Redan, but finally Marietta from Cobb County gets in here, and we'll see a, contra a very contrasting style of basketball tonight. Let's talk a little bit about the Lady Raiders, of course, last year in the state championship game, falling short against Stevenson, but they got some great athletes, and it starts with Nia Evans. It does start with Nia Evans. She's the go-to person on offense. Uh, clearly, she's strong. She operates around the basket. Uh, but notice about Redan, Nia Evans is per clearly the go-to player, but they spread their scoring around. She's the highest scorer at 11.2 points a game, so it's a team effort for Redan. Kira Page, Alicia Andrews, Nia Evans, Mackenzie Dalrymple, and Delia Brunson, the five starters on the floor today for the Lady Raiders. And again, they are looking to stay undefeated here. Their last loss, of course, scrimming in last year's state championship game. Meanwhile, the Marietta Lady Blue Devils, seven losses on the season. But boy, they have really hit their stride here in the last couple of weeks. They've come through an extremely tough region. And uh, Coach Sprague is, uh, Coach Ken Sprague has been here. He had Angel Robinson who's playing for Georgia. His system is totally different than Redan's. It all runs through Telia McCall. Everything runs through her. She's really the only scorer on the team. Uh, she operates outside of the three-point arc. She operates on the post. But uh, the offense seems to run everything through her and to her. And she's got a lot of strength around the rim. A little over 18 points a game. And there you get a look at the starting five for Marietta. Brittany Eccles, Brittany White, Danny Bartlemay, Molly Fagan, and Talia McCall. Again, that 6-2 senior forward. Well, time now for the starting introductions. Let's go ahead and throw it over to the table. Dr. David Witherow of Murray County with tonight's introductions. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. First for the Redan Lady job, Raiders. Man. At guard, a 5-2 junior number five, Alicia Andrews. At guard, a 5-8 junior number 10, Mackenzie Dalrymple. At guard, a 5-5 sophomore number 15, Kiara Page. At forward, a six-foot junior, number 32, Nia Evans. And at forward, a six-foot senior, number 55, Delia Brunson. The head coach for Redan is Rhonda Malone. Now let's meet the starters for the Marietta Lady Blue Devils. At guard, a 5'5 senior, number 10, Brittany Eccles. At guard, a 5'6 senior, number 20, Brittany White. At forward, a 5'8 sophomore, number 24, Molly Fagan. At forward, a 6'2 senior, number 30, Talia McCall. And at center, a 6'3", senior number 44, Danny Bertelme. So there you have it. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. 
The Class 5A Girls Championship set to tip off between Redan and Marietta. First, let's check in with the other member of our broadcast team tonight, Lisa Weiss is courtside with more on this one. Lisa. Thanks, Dave. Now, for both these teams making it this far just isn't enough. They want to win it all. Redan is hoping the third time is a charm. Their motto all season has been play smart, play strong, and play together. Now, Marietta, it's been 58 years since they've won state. Now, they've come close only to get knocked out year after year before the big game. But Coach Spray believes this team is poised to win it all. And Dave, he is confident that their defense will help lead the way. All right, thanks, Lisa. And yeah, Coach Sprague, I tell you what, he's quite a character over, over there now. I tell you what, this guy is very animated, but lots of fun there indeed, and he is very confident in his team's ability to get and it as done a referee, tonight. I can tell you, though, he's, he's animated, but he's a total gentleman, a pleasure to work with, and you're right, he's a funny guy. Lisa likes his sense of humor, too. <laughs> We'll check back in with Lisa a little bit later on. Right now we get set for the tip. Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you along with the rest of our GPB crew. Wall-to-wall -wall action is championship week and continues live right here on GPB. And it's Marietta who will control the opening tip. That's Brittany White, the 5'6'' senior. And as you mentioned, Dick, really this offense really runs through to Leah McCall, the 6'2'' senior, averaging 18 points a game. Uh, yes, and it's uh, the other night in the semifinal, she stepped out to the arc and ran the offense. They're using her on the post in a more traditional offense right now. And she's got two pretty tall girls with her there to give her some uh, uh, some support. And Molly Fagan, number 24, sophomore, also number 44, Danny Bartlemé, six foot three senior, number 44. There you look at the officials: Rochelle Brown, Roy Lee Honeycutt, and Mike Oglesby. And I know you're familiar with some of those folks. Roy Lee Honeycutt is a colleague of mine with the Peach State Basketball Association. And uh, Rochelle and Mike Oglesby are with Greater Georgia, which handles the south side of Metro Atlanta. Three-point shot on the way. That one off the mark by Kiera Page. Three players averaging double figures for this Redan Lady Raider team. Another shot at three, also off the mark. Very out of there with it. Yeah, you know we're talking about the coaching being a fraternity, but how about those officials? I know it's a fraternity with you guys as well. Well, you, you've had to experience some of it when you worked with me. <laughs> yeah, but we're a brotherhood because uh, we're the third team on the floor, and uh, we have to stick together. There's two teams and the third team. Right. And you guys are the team that probably gets booed the most. I mean, you know, that's <laughs> the thing. I mean, you guys are really catching it. That's that, You get used to it real quickly. <laughs> no score inside the first minute and a half. A whistle and a foul going to be called there, it looks like, on Mackenzie Dalrymple, who will pick up her first. But what, what caused that foul was the attention Redan was giving to Talia McCall. She had broken open there at the top of the paint, and, and they swarmed her. Number 30, McCall, with the basketball right here. Certainly the player to watch here tonight for the Lady Blue Devils. Inside, Bartlemé works, trying to use that six-foot-three frame, but has the door shut and kicks it back out. Brittany Eccles, the senior. Younger sister, Sierra, will also come in and play the sophomore. Brittany Eccles is a very fiery player. She plays with a whole lot of emotion. She lets her feelings be known. McCall, little floater right there, could not get it to go. Short, Redan quickly back down on the other end. That's Dow Ripper who lays it up and in. Now, that's what Redan's got to do. Being a little bit smaller than Marietta, they've got to get out on the break and have that terrific point guard, Alicia, Alicia Andrews, uh, get the ball to the girls on the wings. And the first two points of this 5A class championship belong to the Lady Raiders. Again, Rodan out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, playing out of Region 2, a perfect 26-0 on the year. You know, the last undefeated girls team to win a state title in the last 15 teams was Collins Hill, the only team out of the last 15 in 2007. This Fayette County had a shot earlier today in the 4A game, but fell short against Southwest DeKalb. That went out of bounds right there. Dow Ripple pleading her case that it was last touched by the Lady Blue Devils, but I don't believe she's going to get the call Here there. Here she is on the breakaway, but unfortunately, she, uh, well, that wasn't the other play, but, but that was the last shot, and that's what Dan's got to do. They've got to run that fast break. Brittany White will run that offense whenever McCall is not doing it. White, of course, pretty much the point guard for the Lady Blue Devils. Kicks it out. There's Brittany Eccles once again. Marietta showing a lot of patience right here. Here, Long baseline shot from Bartlemé. Would not go. Kept alive, though, by one of the shortest players on the floor there in Brittany Eccles. 
And then a whistle inside going to go against Marietta. One of the things that's fun to watch with Redan is the defense of uh, Alicia Andrews. She's the probably the shortest player on the floor. You and I have seen her before. She is a dogged defender and, and, and tough because she's so small. She can kind of come into the under the bigger girls. Swings it over. Dow Ripple had an open look there momentarily. Couldn't quite glove it in time to take advantage of it. That one knocked away by McCall, who comes up with it. Marietta trying to tie it up here early, and they're going to get Delia Brunson reaching see, in. See, that time McCall came down, she had Nia Evans right on her head. Alicia Andrews would be right on her head. There was no room for her to operate. Coach Ron Malone there in the middle, the uh, head coach for this Redan program, 11th season. At the school, 211 victories. We'll step aside and be right back with a timeout on the floor. 417 to play. So far, low scoring. Redan up 2-0 over Marietta. Redan up 2 nothing over Marietta. Lisa Wee standing by courtside with the principal from D Redan. Lisa. A very excited principal. Greg Goodwin, I know it's a thrill for you all to watch these girls make it back to state over and over again. It's phenomenal. Uh, our girls have not quit. We uh, tell them every year what a great season they have and how proud we are. They're not satisfied with that. As you know, we've met before. We're trying to win it all this time because our girls will not be satisfied until we win it all. Our student body is pumped up. Our school is pumped up. We're so excited to be back. Well, thank you. Good luck. Enjoy the second half. Dave, back to you. All right, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, Redan in their third title game in the last five years. Of course, fell last year to Stevenson, but trying to make it stick this year and certainly have the team to do it. Well, if, if the recent history of uh, these Final Fours with you and me, Dave, uh, there is so much basketball power in the center of DeKalb County. Uh, you've got Redan, you've got Stevenson, you've got Southwest DeKalb. Uh, those are all just powerful basketball programs. You can't omit Tucker, some of the others, but uh, uh, it is it is becoming a dominant area for girls hoops, rivaling Gwinnett County. So far, just two nothing. That uh, lone bucket coming from a lay-in from Mackenzie Dalrymple there a couple of minutes ago, and that's pretty much it so far. Well, it's the defense. What what's happening is both teams are playing very intensely on defense, and the offenses are having trouble getting used to that. Nice save right there by Alicia Andrews, who keeps it in play. And then inside, good look there to Nia Evans with her first two of the night. Alicia Andrews, a water bug. That save right over your head was, uh, was quite a play. And there again, she almost breaks up uh, another pass from Marietta. Yeah, caused a little havoc there in the backcourt. Here comes number 35 for Marietta, Courtney Sprague. There you look at Coach Ken Sprague. His daughter just checking in. 219 victories in his 13th season at Marietta. And, and, that, and that daughter, Courtney Sprague, number 35, is a freshman. Getting a taste of a state final game as a freshman. Well, that's got to be nerve-wracking. I tell you what, out here in front of this crowd at the Gwinnett Arena as a freshman playing in a state championship game. That one knocked away good hands there by McCall. With these little guards on both teams, they can't relax on offense. They can't relax the dribble. There's just there's darting hands. There's heavy pressure. And uh, it's it's a chance. They can't relax and think about the play, bring it up the court. Anissa Daniels, 50, stepping in there, as you saw. 4-0 Redan in the first period right here. In the first trip to the state championship for Marietta and Coach Sprague's 13 seasons. And there is Kiera Page with her first three of the night. Again, they, they, their scoring is very evenly divided. Nice defensive break up there by Mackenzie Dalrymple, and she converts it. Into two points. Dalrymple with four here in the first quarter, and Coach Sprague wants a 30-second timeout. So Redan with a 9-0 run to start this ball game here in the first five minutes of this first quarter. Defense wins games, and they've been pesky. Here's your steal, and uh, Mackenzie Dalrymple, no trouble converting uh, off the steal midcourt. 
Pressure defense. You know, Nia Evans was the player that we focused on last year in the state championship game as a sophomore. But as you mentioned, you can really take your pick. There's three or four players averaging right around double figures. And that's just pretty much uh, what this Redan team is all about. Sure, Nia Evans uh, is 11 points a game. And Mackenzie Dalrymple's 10 and Kira Page is 10. Uh, th th that's obviously a team concept. We're not building big stars here at Redan. We're spreading the ball around. So the Lady Blue Devils have certainly dug themselves into a little bit of a hole here early on. Nice zone trapping press, very well executed. Doesn't give Marietta time to set up. Here's a look off the front of the iron, would not go by Sabrina McCants, who stepped in a moment ago. No look pass right there by Andrews, who will do a couple of those occasionally. Yes, she will. She, she will, but she, she's just fun to watch because she's so small. And sometimes I think they just overlook her. Their, their sight line's higher than she is. It does a really good job, though, in creating opportunities, finding her teammates, knowing where they're at on the floor. And that's what you want. A three-point shot off the mark, but a whistle and a foul going to go against Dow Ripple. That'll be her second, and that's going to put Brittany Eccles at the line shooting three, I believe. That's right. And uh, that's a foul that causes coaches heartburn. Fouling a jump shooter beyond the arc. She just bumped her a little bit, but she had no business getting that close. Courtney Fambro into the ball game for Redan, the 5'8 senior, is one of the first players off the bench and certainly a player that is really the heart of this team. Absolutely. That one off the glass and Marietta on the board. Is that McCall, I believe, that got her first two? Now here's the pressure on... Uh, on uh, oh, nice pass from Alicia Andrews. Easy bucket. Evans with two more. She's got four. Uh, the Marietta problem is right there with the ball. Double team uh, to Leah McCall. She's the offense. If she doesn't get it, they're in trouble. And she does. Now she's maybe going to break out a little bit, settle down. McCall with Marietta's four points here in the first quarter, 11-4. Seven-point ball game back on the other end. There's Fambro putting up a shot too strong. And Brittany White back and running the other way, trying to create an advantage on the numbers there. Brittany Eccles with it, kicks it back out. Three-point shot is on the way off the front of the iron. No good. Here's Andrews pushing the floor. Both these teams very quick. Andrews, three-point shot is there, and that's the first field goal of the night for the 5-2 junior. She really is just fun to watch. You know, I hadn't seen her since our, our last... Uh, state final telecast and I'd really forgotten just how much fun she is to watch on either end of the court. 14-4, 10 point ball game with a minute left here in the opening quarter. Now they're going to look for Talia McCall. This time she sets up on the wing. And there's three on the answer on the other end. McCall with seven. All seven of Marietta's first points. And she pretty much has been the offense. Again, 18 points a game this year, as we've talked about. Some other players have gotten involved. Brittany Eccles, of course, one of those. Brittany White, bringing the cans off the bench. But McCall is that team leader, make no mistake. That's right. And again, the pressure causes a turnover here. Uh, here, Marietta looked like they were starting to get back, and then there's a silly turnover down there at the end. But uh, that's the other coach's heartburn. Saw Coach Malone right there, good college player in her own right. At, over at Auburn, fine player. Three-point shot coming. This one from Andrews off the mark this time. And now Marietta will push the floor again. 5A Girls State Championship inside 30 seconds here in this first period. Redan up by a touchdown. <laughs> now they've got a set for one shot. Again, yep, that can take a little early, I guess. But uh, the defense isn't giving them many good looks. And McCants unable to hit the three. And then Eccles going to be called for her second foul. Two team fouls on Marietta, three on Redan. Number 24, Molly Fagan, the 5'8 sophomore, will step back in for the Lady Blue Devils. And Redan will inbound it here with 11.5 on the clock. They got to make a quick attempt here, and here's the one who can do it. Redan, 6 of 11 field goal, shoot 55% from the floor, and that's been a big reason why they've been able to jump out the way they have as the final seconds tick off the clock here inside the arena at Gwinnett Center. End of one, 14-7, Redan leads Marietta. We're back with four.
This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Redan leads Marietta 14-7 in the GHSA 5A Girls State Championship. Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you. Lisa Reese courtside along with the rest of our GPB crew. And defense really the theme, Dick, in that first period. Both teams allowing right around 40 points a game uh, on the season. So statistically right there even with each other. And that's kind of what we saw there in that first quarter, uh, both teams struggling a little bit. Right, especially Marietta having uh, a little bit of problem with the quickness of Redan's players and getting that ball going. Boy, look at those fans right there decked out for Redan. Did you see that, man? Oh, no, I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> were they fearsome Raiders? Oh, yes, they were. Yes, they were. Another steal for Redan. Yeah, Delia Brunson on the other end quickly down there. Pull-up jumper would not go. Follows her own shot, tries to keep it alive. And it will go back, or will stay with Redan here. Courtney Fambro, 42, will inbound it. And Redan with... Four from Nia Evans in that first quarter. Four from Dow Ripple. Three each from Paige and Andrews. And here's a three shot on the way off the glass for Fambro. Now, did she call that? She used the backboard. You got to oh, call I'm that. Not on sure. The street, yeah, in a championship yeah. game. Yeah, you may have to call that one. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, come on, playground rules here. You exactly. Call that. But back to a 10 point lead on the other end. That shot would not go for Molly Fagan. Out of bounds. And a whistle. Foul going to be called right here. Looks like on Brunson. Molly Fagan, number 24 for Marietta, uh, was an interesting player. I, she's not the most skilled athlete in the room, but uh, I watched her. She's a very crafty and smart basketball player, and uh, she's the kind who might be able to figure out how to crack this Redan defense. Double teaming Talia every time. Oh, and that created open look inside their good Absolutely. move by Brittany White. White with her first two of the night. Becomes the first player other than McCall to record her name in the scorebook here in this first half. Prior to that, McCall had all seven, and there's a whistle, and that foul going to be on White, it looks like. Well, White is, is the key to getting this thing going for uh, Marietta. Uh, she's the team's assist leader at four. Now, she's up against a player with probably greater quickness than she, which makes it a, an unusual evening for her. But uh, White's got to get it going and get that ball to McCall. Saw Fambro's numbers right there. Impressive on the year, averaging 8.2. 5'8 senior, knocks down the first free throw. Second one on the way, hits that one as well. Back to a 10-point game at 19-9. Tough pressure for Redan here again. Zone trap. But Marietta negotiates it pretty well. And here's Brittany White. Three-point shot on the way, off the iron. Looks like a... Jump ball call right there, going in favor of Redan. This Lady Raider team, an 05 title game loss against Collins Hill, was the first one. We have a 30 second time out of the floor, and of course, last year falling to Stevenson. So, trying to make it work this year is Coach Ronham alone and this Redan team, a perfect 26 0 coming into this ball game. And they have certainly done a great job. Well, we hope you're enjoying our live broadcast of the best in Georgia high school basketball and ask that you stay tuned at halftime for your opportunity to become a member of the Georgia Public Broadcasting family. Remember, it's viewers like you that help make great local programs like this possible, and thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. You can become a member today at GPB, and we can certainly tell you how to do that at halftime. Stay with us right here. Don't go away anywhere. You know, another one of our partners is ScoreAtlanta.com. We'll be talking about them later, but... Uh, in the game program, which they prepared, is one of the best interviews I've ever seen with Commissioner Ralph Swearingen. Touches all the contentious issues in high school basketball. It's really worth a read. It can be seen on their website. It's for Atlanta.com. Three-point shot is there for Fambro. And all of a sudden, Courtney Fambro with eight points. And that's a game high. Well, she's a senior. She's coming off the bench. She uh, She's earned her stripes here. And uh, make that last game a good one. McCants with the basketball, swings it over to McCall. McCall being guarded by Anissa Daniels, the six-foot sophomore, currently in the lineup. Brittany Johnson, head fake. And now Molly Fagan looking for somewhere to go with the basketball, but Daniels stepped in front of that one. And Daniels, pretty large target right there. Andrews, three-point shot on the other end. Her second of the game. 
Alicia Andrews transferred her freshman year from Avondale High School and has certainly been huge for this Redan team over the last couple of seasons. She's just fun to watch. There's nothing more to say. We get a look at Andrews right there as Brittany Eccles of Marietta steps back in. Forgive us if we occasionally uh, exchange the Britneys. We've got a Brittany White and a Brittany Eccles. Uh, but the key is they're the team's assist leaders and team steal leaders. So they've, they've got to, to really play at both ends. Whistling back the other way, a little action on, away from the ball right there. And that's going to be three on Brittany Eccles. Wow. Oh. Number 10 away from the basket right there. As you see the three-point numbers, Redan five of eight, Marietta one of three. Looking inside right there. That's a tough one. They're going to get McCall for the foul there. That is tough for Marietta, having three this early on Brittany Eccles. Good look there at Evans. At the line here with four points in this first half. And missing on the first, she'll have another. Nia Evans again, a six foot junior. See her output here today so far. A rebound to go along with that. 537 left here in the first half. Fagan will go out for Marietta. And back in will step Sprague, the freshman. Also Sierra Eccles, number 13, as we mentioned. We'll see her in there as well. The younger sister of Brittany Eccles, who will sit with those three fouls. Coach Ken Sprague leaving Brittany Eccles in the game with the three personal fouls with only 5.30, with still 5.30 to go to halftime. See McCall being worked on this time. It's Fambro switching off on her a little bit here. Of course, Daniels going out of the lineup for Redan. So a couple different folks here have the assignment of trying to lock down McCall, who adds on another pair right there. And she's got nine of Marietta's 11 points. And, and you see now why Talia McCall is going to go to the University of Virginia and play some basketball. Yep. That, that was two nice, smooth moves down there. Whistle on the foul going to be called there on McCall. It's going to be two on her. 16 fouls now on the Lady Blue Devils. Nice steal right there. Brittany White Brittany with Eccles, the basketball. Yep, going to settle it down. Turnaround, tough shot, wouldn't quite go, but McCants will draw the whistle and head to the strike. Marietta, of course, defeating Lassiter in round one, 53-35. McCall had 28 points in that ball game. And Norcross was a seven-point ball game. McCall with 24. As you see, McCants missing on her first one. We'll have another, but McCall has really been consistent all throughout the postseason. 31 last night against Beach in the semifinals and a 58-40 win. And that was a complete offensive effort by McCall, inside and outside. She, she played an extremely good game. Meanwhile, Rodan with an emotional semifinal win last night over Parkview, 63-62. And that's something we haven't talked much about here is both these teams coming off of big games last night. you got to wonder how those legs are going to be feeling in the fourth quarter. But you know whether it be in the state championship, yeah. i got a feeling they're going to be okay. When you're in the finals, I don't think the legs uh, <laughs> cramp as much. I, I, I think this is the stage that these kids all want. Uh, that, that was a terrific Parkview team that was defeated uh, by Redan. Uh, a Parkview team of old with the great interior passing under Coach Mike McCoy. Uh, they do the best job of that of any team I've seen. Kira Page at the line, missed on the first. Page had 19 points in that ball game last night. And misses two, and neither team really helping uh, themselves out at the uh, stripe. It's worth noting that when Redan went to the 2-1-2 uh, zone press against Parkview, that's when they got back in the game and took the lead. Uh, and, and that same kind of a defense is frustrating Marietta. We'll step aside with 440 to play in the first half. 26-11, Redan leads Marietta. Let's go courtside with Lisa Wee standing by with another special guest. Lisa. Dave, I gotta tell you, Marietta's principal Lee Colburn gets an A-plus for showing school spirit, but I think that's just an indication of what it's been like in Marietta High School with the Lady Blue Devils making it to state. Oh, it's been a wonderful year. I'm proud of the girls tonight. I've been proud of them all season. They are terrific students. They're great role models in our school. They've just, it's been a joy to watch them grow together and grow up as a team. They've done a great job. Well, thanks for joining us and good luck in the second half to your school. Dave, back to you. 
All right, thanks, Lisa. Once again, back in the uh, principal's office right there. And uh, both sets of fans, both schools very enthusiastic I, about being here. And, I'm, hey, why not? I'm worried about Lisa. She might get detention. <laughs> He's racking up the points there, that's for sure, meeting all these principals here. Back to action right here again. Redan has pretty much led from the uh, beginning and in control. Marietta has certainly gotten it done in spurts, led by Talia McCall there with nine points. But Redan has had an answer, and there's two from Anissa Daniels, her first two of the night, six-foot sophomore, and all, averaging nine points a game. And Talia McCall had to be a little cautious on that play. She couldn't fully challenge it. And McCall playing with a couple of fouls. Well, Redan trailed for the first time all season last night in that win over Parkview. 13 to 1 run though in the fourth quarter was the difference in that ball game right there. As Coach Rhonda Malone and the uh, Lady Raiders were able to pull it out in the end by a point. Certainly the closest ball game of the year they've played and here they are back in the state championship game. And of course we're in the bonus now for uh, uh, for Redan. Okay. Yeah, both teams both now. Both teams in the bonus, yep. yeah. My eyes deceive me with that small <laughs> set of numbers up there, Dave. I hear you. 5'10 senior Sabrina McCants knocks down a pair. Two for two on that trip. 28-13. Marietta trying to draw a little bit closer right here tonight. Continuing to keep the, uh, the zone trap pressure on. And they're actually doing that pretty well. That does slow down Redan. They can't really run against that sort of a defense. You got to watch out anytime the ball's in the hands of number five, which it is right now. Amen. But the double team works. Look at that dribbling out of traffic right there, firing and inside. Always knows where the where the player is at. Uh, that was so pretty coming out of that double team and finding that player cutting down the lane. That that was just a, a nice play by Alicia Andrews. The yeah, Evans back at the line here. See Evans, four points in this first half. Number 44, Danny Barmel made the 6'3 senior back in for Marietta. Again, Lisa alluded to it up top. It's been almost 60 years since the uh, Lady Blue Devils have won a state championship all the way back in 1951. So this will certainly be huge here with seven losses on the season, 25 wins to come in here and pull off a big upset against an undefeated Redan team. Well, you know, they've also had a major change at Marietta. The boys basketball coach, Charlie Hood, has retired after 30 or so years. Uh, th there's a legend that's going to be tough to replace. But Marietta plays in that gleaming new facility. It's a beautiful school, and they've got some opportunities with that. Shot short out of the hand of Bartleman. Kept alive, though, by Sprague, who follows with a putback. Courtney, Courtney Sprague, again, the 5'7 freshman, daughter of Coach Ken Sprague. Knocking down her first two of the night. That three-point shot from Fambrough off the mark. And Brittany White quickly back the other way. Kept it alive. Good ball movement. Good uh, work right there. Held that dribble while she was uh, yeah, she when, did. when she was sitting on the hardwood. Oh, inside. Good look right there. Just the Cants couldn't quite get it to go. It will stay with the Lady Blue Devils. You know, Dick, this is a Marietta team that doesn't, you know, 51 points offensively, allowing 40. They've won a lot of close games this year. Right. You know, not certainly that dominant team like you might expect coming into the championship, but they do enough to win basketball games. Well, they're in that position because of the one-dimensional nature of their offense. They're not going to score a lot of points because they've got to get it set up for Julia McCall. Right. They just don't have the scoring power. They've got good players, but they don't have the scoring power, for example, of the Redan trio. Redan's got more options than Marietta does. The flip side of that, of course, Redan with 62 points offensive average on the year. Put up a few more points than Marietta, but again, defensively, 40 apiece. You see the turnovers right there. Marietta with eight certainly hasn't helped their cause here in this first half. We're down with four. Now the offense is a little uncertain because McCall's not on the court. So now they've 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 got uh, their their post player out high to start the offense. White swings it over. Bartleman makes a move baseline, puts up a tough shot, would not go. Last touch by the Lady Blue Devils, so back to Redan. Number 22, Sydney Mason into the lineup. As you see, Coach Sprague, 13 seasons at Marietta. First semifinal was last night. Coach Sprague's 13 years for his first final here tonight. And a lay-in. Good-looking move right there. Nia Evans inside the recipient of a nice look. 
it, it's just simply a struggle here for Mary to get the offense going. It, it's, uh, it's, it's not that Dan is playing any kind of a tricky defense or anything. He's playing aggressively, and they're in the passing lanes. Ball will stay with the Lady Blue Devils. Lauren Webster, a 6'3 sophomore, will step into the lineup. Off the inbound right here. Oh, good look inside to Fagan, and it goes. Molly Fagan, the 5'8 sophomore, with her first two points of the night. Again, the pressure. And now Marietta's offense is starting to step up here a little bit, Dick, but the bad news for them is Redan hasn't let up any. Uh, no, not at all. And uh, Redan's getting many more open looks at the basket than, Mar than Marietta is. Marietta's not getting the, the, the wide-ranging opportunities of people coming down the lane or coming in from the wings. They're, they're in a set-up offense, and they've got to make something work. Uh, whereas Redan really is, is running free on the break, and that just created a lot of easier shots for him. Evans back at the line has certainly created some opportunities here in the first half at the stripe, but misses on the front end there. And 31-17, Lady Raiders in control. First for Dan beating Northside, Warner Robins in round one, 71-43, beat Camden in round two. Beat Bradwell Institute in the quarterfinals, 59-39. And, of course, that thriller last night against Parkview, 63-62, to advance to the championship game. That one by Andrews in and out. Both teams missing threes, and now Marietta quickly back down on the other end of the floor. And it looks like they're going to get uh, Evans for a foul. And, and that really was one of the first opportunities Marietta's had to find an open player behind the defense. She was in the middle of a mismatch, but she drew the foul. But again, that, that prevents you, helps you from having to get caught in your set-up offense. And you see the fouls trouble right there again. Eccles with three, McCall with three as well. That's a lot of your offense right there if you're Marietta. Oh. Fagan with two points here tonight, misses both. Neither team really able to capitalize much from the line. To be precise with those uh, two girls in foul trouble, that is about 25% uh, of the offense. Yeah. Yep. Turnover right there by Daniels. It goes back to Marietta with 50 seconds left here in this first half. And Redan came out of the gate on a 7-0 run. And they have not looked back since. Marietta likes the pressure defense. But Redan has been able to get up and down the floor pretty well in good shape here. Three-point shot on the way from Johnson would not go. And the follow blocked away there. Stays alive and in place somehow or another. Brittany Johnson with it, but her foot was on the line. A lot of things going on there in that last sequence. But it will be Redan basketball with 23.8. And Marietta beat Duluth in the quarterfinals, 47-32. And, of course, last night against Beach by 18. McCall with 30 points in that ball game. The difference between last night and tonight is against Beach, McCall ran free wherever she wanted to be. Uh, against Redan, she's not allowed to get anywhere. Fambro with three more, and how about Courtney Fambro, the 5'8 senior with 11 points here in this first half to lead all scorers. I, I love it when a senior who's a bench player, albeit the first one off the bench, gets an opportunity. That one will be waved off right there. 34-17 at the break. Redan leads it over Marietta in this Class 5A Girls State Championship matchup. A lot of action in the first half, and let's go downstairs to Lisa Wee standing by with Coach Malone. Coach Malone, your defense has done a tremendous job shutting down Marietta. What are you going to tell them at halftime to keep this energy going? We're going to have to keep, you know, keep our pressure up, um, keep our intensity up, um, continue to do the things we need to do to win this ball game. I mean, if we continue to pressure the basketball, you know, take good shots, um, stop and throw it underneath the basket, doing those things that are necessary to win basketball, we'll be okay. But we still got a second half, so we still got to play hard. Thank you for your time, and good luck in the second half, Coach. Dave? All right, thanks, Lisa. Again, 34-17 to score at the break in this 5A Girls State Championship. Redan leads Marietta. Find out how you can become a member. Stay tuned to GPB. We're back with more basketball in a few minutes. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station.
Redan 34-17 over Marietta. Let's go courtside. Lisa standing by with Coach Sprague. Coach Sprague just walked away, but Dave, right back to you. All right, we'll try to catch up with them a little bit later on there. Dave Garner alongside Dick Williams. And uh, Dick, looking back at that first half, very exciting basketball, but Redan pretty much dominant. Marietta certainly got their work cut out for them in the second half. Absolutely. They've got the score doubled up on them. Their defensive pressure has been relentless, and Marietta has not been able to adjust to that pressure. The 2 1 2 trap, which also foiled Parkview. Has, uh, has really worked uh, tonight for the Redan Raiders. Yeah, looking back at that first half, of course, a lot of plays that stood out there. Of course, Nia Evans with seven points there, but Courtney Fambro, of course, with 11, uh, the uh, main leader there for Redan, and of course for Marietta, nine points as we take a look back at the first half there and plenty of impressive plays for well, Redan. And that's Alicia Andrews making a great pass inside to Nia Evans. Here again, the defensive pressure. And uh, Brittany Echo, uh, Redan is able to score off the uh, off the uh, defensive pressure three times in a row there. On the Marietta end, Courtney uh, Talia McCall has not really broken loose yet, but uh, Brit Brittany Eccles here has been able to work inside and uh, and penetrate a couple of times, but still it's 34 to 17, Redan. And, uh, Take a look at the numbers there. Again, field goal 7 of 24 for Redan, 12 of 21 for Marietta. Three-point shots. You see the free throws, rebounds, 13-11 edge to Marietta. Turnovers, though, 9 and just 5 for Redan. Again, Fambro, 11 points, 3 of 5 field goals, 3 of 3 from three-point land has certainly been a big reason why this Lady Raider team is in the position they're in. Right. When you get a player coming off the bench to help you like that, that's a, that's a big deal. So here we go now. Start of the second half. And Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you. Lisa Weiss court side along with the rest of the GPB crew. The Class 5A Girls State Championship live from the arena here at Gwinnett Center. Marietta opens the half with the basketball. Tough turnaround shot. Would not go in and out of there. And that's just the kind of night it's been so far. But you can also see what they're trying to do. Now they're going to readjust their offense and get that ball down low to, to Leah McCall. Back on the other end, Mackenzie Dalrymple had a couple of buckets there in the first half. Looking inside, trying to feed Evans, does so. Shot off the mark. Give nice, in. Yeah. very nice step down and step through move. Just wouldn't fall for it. The Lady Raiders opened the ball game on a 7-0 run. And since then, again, Redan's pretty much doubled him up here at 34-17. There you look at McCall. Taken away inside nicely by Andrews. Had a couple of nice no-look passes. He just saw there's another one of those sidewinders that we saw there from the highlight reel in the uh, first half. And this one pays off. It's 2-4. Now here's the zone pressure. The zone trap pressure right here. Now they drop back into a zone that I suspect is, uh, it looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Could be a matchup. And uh, this is where they've got to find McCall somewhere behind that zone defense. Brittany White knocks down a bucket for the Lady Blue Devils. 36-19. Andrews being guarded here by Eccles, playing with those three fouls. Remember, Eccles and McCall both picked up three personals in that first half. The slate is white clean here in the second half so far. And a nice move there by Evans inside. You know, you forget about how big Evans is. I mean, a six-foot junior for the main scorer on this team, but she can really play anywhere on the floor. Well, I, you know? she's, she's strong, she's stout. And she's really got some nice moves, power moves right to the glass. Right. Uh, she's only a junior. That, that post play work is probably going to take her a long way. But uh, she's got to step down and, and hammer it up to the rim. Evans at the line, knocks down the first. Admittedly, neither team able to really tear it up from the stripe there in the first half on those uh, freebies there. As you see, Evans points now, though. He's got 10 points, two of six at the line. As frustrating as it must have been, when you look at those halftime stats, Mary had a shot pretty well. <laughs> I was surprised, particularly at the three-point arc. Now I kind of noticed that too. You would, you know, looking at the score. I mean, it's one right. thing, but uh, seeing the percentage and what they did from the field wasn't too bad. They just haven't been able to get a lot of shots off against this Redan defense. And here's three from the corner. Would not go for Dow Ripple. And now McCall works back the other way, loses the handle on it, picked up though by McCants. Eccles is there, swings it out. Oh, this is a very effective defense. Jumping out and doubling them up. Going to leave Eccles open for three, but too strong. Back oh, on the other is. end. Oh, nice look here. Page all alone on the other end. Up and in. 
Page with six points here. A 5 6 sophomore averaging in double figures. And the ball back on the other end. Tough shot wouldn't go. The follow also misses from McCann. So now Andrews back and running quickly the other way. Pull up, little floater. Wouldn't go. And it will stay with Redan. Heads up play right there by Andrews working along that baseline, threw it off of one of the Marietta defenders. You know, on that long breakaway to Kiera Page, Nia Andrews threw that ball from darn near the end line at the other end. And uh, uh, for a gal that size, that was like uh, hitting the plate from center field in the Yankee Stadium. <laughs> you saw it 54% to 28%. Uh, 28%. From the field. Here's Andrews, pull up, take the shot, three-point shot, would not go. And it will go back to the Lady Blue Devils. Marietta, four consecutive trips to the state quarterfinals, but the first semifinal under Coach Craig and the first state championship appearance here, of course, tonight. At that time, that time they were able to break that trap pressure, but still turned it over. Page had it knocked away, and it looks like that's going to be on McCall. Wow, that's going to be four on her. Well, that's uh, the sands of the hourglass uh, when you're a coach in that situation with your your top player uh, picking up her fourth. Now, she's a senior. She's going to go to UVA. She's a smart player. Uh, she might be able to withstand this and, and uh, hang in there. Oh, nice move inside right there. Nia Evans showing a lot of quickness, especially for a six-foot player. Yes. Nice little spin move there in the lane. Well, they called that on McCall. They called that wow. on McCall. I'll be darned. So I back thought to it was back. off on the other side. Here I just said that I thought she had the, 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 uh, the intelligence and the fortitude to hang in there. That's a shame. That's just a shame because th there goes the, the Marietta offense. And... Uh, Back-to-back -back fouls like that, very, very painful. Well, not quite halfway through this third period, and that's certainly not good news for the uh, Lady Blue Devils right there. Their consistent score throughout the postseason. Remember, at four rounds of basketball this year, she's scored 106 points, 28 points, 24, 24, and 30 in the four playoff games, and, of course, just nine here tonight and now out of the game for the rest of the time. All right. Here's the problem. They no longer have a go-to player of any kind. Uh, Brittany White averages six points a game. We'll take a quick timeout and be back. 4.32 to play in the third period. Yeah. Over the Marietta Blue Devils here in this 5A GHSA Girls State Championship matchup. Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you. Lisa Weiss courtside along with the rest of our GPB crew. 42 to 19 again, Redan with all the momentum in this one. You know, we talked about coming in that Marietta pressure defense, Dick, but tonight Redan's defense has certainly been the difference in this matchup. Well, and now the question really for Marietta is who becomes the go-to player. Their next leading scorers after McCall average six and six respectively. So you don't have the natural go-to player. And senior Brittany White decides she's it there for the moment. We'll see as it goes along what they decide to do offensively. Well, Coach Brake's certainly going to have to rely on some of those upperclassmen like you know, White there. And, of course, Bartle oh, may as well. she got the roll. Man, how about Daniel's that? Daniels got the roll. She was fouled hard, muscled it up. Uh, a nice play by the post player for Dan. Anisha Daniels. Anisha Daniels, yes, yeah, six foot sophomore. And I've been impressed with her tonight. I mean, she is also moving around there real well. Four points, three rebounds. Just a young player. But certainly doesn't, you know, doesn't look like a young player. Doesn't play no, like a young I, player at all. I mean, you look at her and you, you can't believe she's just a sophomore. I'll be honest with you, I forgot she was a sophomore as soon as the game started. Because she doesn't look it. She's she's rugged. She's ready to go. So halfway through this third period right here, Marietta needing some offense indeed. Oh, that one taken away nicely by Andrews, who lays it up and in. Went up with two hands on that one right there, and she's got eight points tonight. Boy, Andrews is so quick, and she absolutely explodes to the hoop. And when she gets out in front of you, it's lights out. They're going to go to, uh, again, to number 20, Brittany White. 
That went in and out right there for Sprague. Almost had three, but kept alive though nicely inside. Throws up a tough shot, and Sprague will earn a trip to the line. And, and you can see the situation here. Coach Ken Sprague has got to put his freshman daughter in the game to get some offense. It's uh, it's an uncomfortable position, I'm sure, for the coach. So Coach Sprague again, 13 years though at Marietta. Done he's a, a great he's job. A good one. He's a good one. And this is off the uh, side of the iron right there. Courtney averages 6.2 points a game. And uh, when we see her in a couple of years, we'll probably see an entirely different player and we'll be very surprised. Two and, Coach, and a half rebounds there as well. Coach's daughters have a little advantage. They get it all day <laughs> long, don't they? Yes, they do. Well, you know, that's the thing. I mean, you go home, you got to hear it there. I mean, you don't just, you can't just leave the school and it be over with and, and go yeah. home and do the homework. I mean, you go home and you. Well, sure. You know. The, the dinner table conversation is breaking down the tape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Coach Sprague right there has done a great job. Again, Marietta 25 and 7 coming in here, but advancing to the state championship. Knocking off some pretty good teams there along the way. Oh, this is a great run no matter how this game comes out. It's, a, it's been a great run for him and for the senior leadership and uh, to Liam McCall and all. And they're still playing hard on defense. Absolutely. Kenzie Dow ripple 10 in there. Oh, good look. Oh, in and out of there for Daniels. Thought she had another roll right there, but it just wouldn't go. Brittany Eccles back on the other side here, the senior. Still looking for her first points tonight. I would expect uh, Brittany even playing with those fouls to take over some of the leadership right here and become more involved in this offense. Now this uh, uh, Molly Fagan looked real good in spurts uh, in their game the other night. Nice ah, touch yeah. there by Bartleman. Danny Bartleman made it look easy there. Give him a little confidence. Uh, Danny Bartleman, a 6'3 senior. Back on the other end, Daniels trying to Work on everybody right there. The foul going to be on Bartle Bay. Just the first foul on her. Team six foul now on Marietta. Taking a look at it right yeah, here. There's Anissa Daniels driving. Uh, minimal contact there, but uh, fouled on the shot. Daniels with the free throw. And Brittany Johnson back in for Marietta. That ball. Really looked good coming out of her hand right there. Looked like she was going to possibly have a chance for a three-point play. You also see Taylor Lloyd, the 5'8 senior, step in for the first time tonight for Coach Craig and that Lady Blue Devil team. Meanwhile, Anissa Daniels trying to add to her total and dust, so she's got seven. It's now 49-21. Again, Redan keeps that pressure on. That, that really puts the pressure on Marietta. Sprague three-point shot. And missed it right there. Now Daniels back and running. And look at Daniels look at, run. Exactly you know, the six-foot sophomore, you know, she handles, running the floor. Just two possessions where she's handling right down the court. Oh, a nice look there indeed into Fambro. Fambro's first points in the second half. She had 11 at the break, so a baker's dozen for Courtney Fambro. And there's Daniels with the speed and the agility to break that thing up. Come hurtling right at us. <laughs> Actually, I thought she wanted to meet Herb White and get his autograph. <laughs> Here's a look at Fambro, that look inside to her in that last bucket for the Lady Raiders. And yeah, Daniels, I'll tell you what, a little bit more there, she would have come right over the top of us here at the table. Yeah, well, Herb was going to take it for us. Herb, Herb was <laughs> going to take the charge for us. There you go. He's a team player. And Sprague with the inbound into Eccles. For Dan trying to become the First undefeated girls team to win a state championship out of the last 15 that have won it, with the exception, of course, being Collins Hill. The undefeated 2017 went all the way and won the championship. And Redan trying to duplicate that feat here tonight. A perfect 26 and 0 coming into this ball game, and win number 27 might be about nine minutes and 40 seconds away. Well, after what happened to the Fayette County girls who came in undefeated, I thought perhaps the odds were against Redan, but they. They've been dominant in this ball game from the opening minutes. And Marietta just can't get anything to go there. The rim is their enemy tonight. Yep. You look at Coach Rhonda Malone right there, who hasn't had to say a whole lot to her young ladies here, that's for sure. 
Well, you know, in their commercial, never let them see you sweat. That's yeah. what it is. She's very calm over there. There you go. There's two more for Bartlemay right there. He's picked it up here a little bit in this third period. And Danny Bartlemay, the 6'3 senior with four points. Now Marietta is going to try the pressure. The question is, do they have the quickness to stay with him? And Evans Forces on the other move. end, yeah. Another nice move by Nia Evans. Evans is over her average here tonight, 53-23. Nearing the one-minute mark here in this third period. Dan, a couple of tries. State championships have come up short, trying to make it stick here tonight. Talking about Delia Brunson. Looks like she might be headed to Hampton. Oh, good for her. A couple of different players there. Oh, boy, and I believe they're going to get Daniels for a little bit of contact right there, or are they? Uh, I can't <laughs> see here. I can't see here. She's got 50. Yes. Boy, knock that one away. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes discretion is a better part of valor uh, with a player of her size. Brittany Johnson, a 5'5 junior, will be at the line for Marietta. Knocks down the first, her first point of the night. 22, Sydney Mason in for Redan. 23, Lauren Webster, the sophomore, in for Marietta. We're going to look at Johnson. Second one on the way, and it's good. Johnson two for two. Well, Mariota's got to press. They, I guess they just have to at this point. You see Mason bring it across, being guarded by Eccles. Nice job right there. Evans nearly had it knocked away. Uh, that was a very nice seal on Anissa's uh, Daniels' attempt to drive to the basket. Three-point shot on the way. Wouldn't go for Evans. Taken out of there nicely by Johnson. Whistle the foul. It's going to be three on Daniels. And right now, all smiles on that Renan bench there, Dick. I tell you what, those young ladies are certainly uh, have a lot to be smiling about at this juncture. Absolutely, yeah. You, you could allow them a little uh, levity before the game's over. Final seconds ticking down here in this third period. Marietta certainly playing hard, not out of it. Another quarter to play right here, but it's been all Redan through three periods. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Well, back in 2001, the uh, first year of Class 5A, there you can look at the uh, state champion since. And the 5A classification with the uh, GHSA basketball champs. Of course, Collins Hill dominating a, a good bit of that roster right there. Of course, Parkview with the championship in 2003. Stevenson, of course, in 04. And last year right here in this very building against Redan. But tonight, the Lady Raiders are looking to stencil their name into that 2009 spot. And they've got a 53-25 lead over Marietta two, as we open up this fourth period. 2005 to 2007 should just be one line. Maya Moore. Yeah. <laughs> Moore, of course, certainly oh, one what of the standout nice players. Oh, hitting the floor right Couldn't there. Couldn't finish it, but a very, very uh, nice pass. Yeah. Check that spot on the floor right there. Evans uh, looked like she slipped, lost her footing, but she's smiling, so she's okay. Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you. Lisa Weiss courtside along with the rest of the GPB crew. Again, live from the Arena Gwinnett Center Championship Weekend continuing. And, of course, the 5A boys matchup coming up a little bit later on here tonight between Milton and Wheeler. Ought to be a good one. Looking forward to that. And right now, of course, the 5A girls championship. And right now it's all Redan trying to hang on here in this final seven and a half minutes to claim their first title in their last three attempts. Again, three title games in five years, but on the uh, short end of the stick, the previous two. You've got to give Ken Sprague credit. He's still coaching it on every play. There's no conceding here. He is using his younger players, though, trying to get him some experience. Yeah, Derica, Derica Hamby, the 6'2 sophomore, will be at the line right here. Coach Sprague in that last time out, Lisa reports to us, told the kids they'd have to step it up and they have to rebound. And they've got to play with more toughness. They are being physically uh, outmanned only, but uh, the, the, uh, the dance squad is, is uh, a little bit bigger and a whole lot stronger. And I don't know how you you compete against that. It was Hamby's second attempt and gets the roll. The Erica Hamby, six foot two, knocks down her first point, 53-26. Good crowd on hand here tonight, as expected and as hoped. 
And certainly for these four and five A championship games here tonight. It's been pretty noisy all afternoon. Well, I wonder if Nia Evans uh, might be done for the night. I mean, I don't know, maybe. And uh, there's two for Hamby. Hit the free throw, came back out, knocked down her first field goal. She's got three points. And you know, when you look down this roster, Dick, I mean, there are a lot of younger players like Hamby and some of those sophomores sure. with a little bit of size right there. Give them another year or two, fill out some. And you never know, this Marietta team may very well be back in the same uh, boat oh, next year in the surely, state championship surely. game. I, I have no doubt about that. Not, I'm, I'm sure they'll get to the championship, but they're going to be a force to be reckoned with because these are good young players. Elise Andrews still in the game. Uh, while Nia Evans sits for a while. Timeout on the floor called by Coach Malone. 30-second timeout call with 6.41 left here in the fourth period. Might see some younger faces getting into this ball game here as well later on. And I'll tell you what, Dick, I've enjoyed it. It's certainly been a, a lot of fun here this afternoon. Well, we hope you're enjoying our live broadcast of the best in Georgia high school basketball, and we ask you to stay tuned after the game for your opportunity to become a member of the Georgia Public Broadcasting family. Remember, it's viewers like you that help make great local programs like this possible, and thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. I want to encourage folks to become a member here today if you like what you're seeing in support of these high school basketball and, of course, football uh, championships in the fall. We urge you to become a member and make sure that programming like this remains on Georgia Public Broadcasting. A lot of fun. It's always great to, you know, our, put our high school student athletes on the big stage and, and give them the publicity and, and be able to There's give them the spotlight. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. I mean, you don't know what uh, young lady uh, is way down in South Georgia and she's thinking, that's where I want to be. I want to be on statewide television. I want to be playing for a championship. Uh, there, there's a lot of that modeling that goes into this. You know, you said you're having a great evening. I was just thinking, uh, to me, just watching Alicia Andrews play, like, for example, just breaking that play out, she was so much fun in the first half, and uh, it's, been, it's, it's been a real interesting evening, even if it is a mismatch. Number 20, Brittany White stepping back in for Marietta. Lauren Webster again, 23. You see Alicia Andrews right there, the 5-2 junior, has eight points here tonight. Has certainly had been gun shy from three-point range. She's thrown up a few here tonight. She's hit a couple of them. And ball loose, a kick ball right there. These officials have been on top of things here tonight. And, uh, well, I've got to tell my friend Mike Oglesby, who just made that kickball signal, that uh, it kind of looks like a strange form of dance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can still dance. You know, who you, knows? You never know. You never know. We've had a lot of good music here tonight, a lot of good dance music in between games during <laughs> warm-ups and halftime. So yep. certainly gotten some practice there. On the other end, tough shot right there. Dow Ripple threw it up. Uh, I wonder if she got hit on that. She looked uh, Yeah, it looked like she did. There was some contact in there somewhere. Courtney Fambro checks back into the uh, game right here, and there is a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside with them. 5.51 left in the fourth period. 53-28, Redan leads Marietta. We're back with the 5A title game. We return. Shot might have been partially tipped. No good. The follow is there by Evans, who will end the game with 14 points. But it's the Stevenson Lady Jaguars who wrap it up by a final of 58 to 43. They are the 2008 G Okay. Redan Lady Raiders. Redan Lady Raiders 53-28 over the Marietta Lady Blue Devils with 5.51 left in this fourth quarter. The GHSA State Championships right here on GPB. Of course, this is the 5A title game. And the Redan Lady Raiders looking to capture the championship here tonight and remain unbeaten on the year. They came in at 26-0. Marietta has fought hard, but of course they lost their leading scorer to Leah McCall to uh, uh, fouled out of the game there in the uh, third period. She finished with nine points, and you know it's tough to replace that kind of offense if you're Marietta, and it's certainly been an, an uphill climb uh, ever since. Yeah, look, I didn't go to Georgia Tech, but I just got a feeling that mathematically, Redan is gonna finish this season undefeated. 
I'm not predicting the outcome. I wouldn't yeah, be so looking bold. That, it's looking that way right now for sure. But credit the Lady Blue Devils who continue to fight. Lisa Weiss comes back with a report that uh, Coach Ronda Malone of uh, Redan has told the kids, don't take your pedal off the throttle. You've got to continue to play hard if you want to win this. She's not doing the same math I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that one taken away by Andrews. Alicia Andrews, look at that look right there. And Dow Ripple kicks it back out. Contact there and a whistle. Looks like Mr. Oglesby, the uh, referee, they're having a little bit of fun with yeah, the, 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 Courtney Fambro. Uh, this, this is a veteran crew, and, and, and they all have great officiating personalities. Uh, they're allowed to smile. Referees should be able to smile every once in a while, and these three know how to do that. I think it relaxes the, the players if they, if they don't think the referees are some kind of uh, prison guards or uh, automatons. <laughs> We're going to look at Kira Page. Six points. Fambro knocking down the first free throw. Both teams in the bonus now. You see her numbers here tonight. 14 points and three rebounds for the senior. Exceeding her average wow. of 9-10 nine, nine, a game. She's had a very fine game. But, you know, we talk about her, you know, not in the starting lineup, but really kind of being that heart and soul, that emotional leader off the bench, if you will, for this Verdan team. And she has meant so much to this Lady Raider program and has certainly stepped up big here tonight. Uh, the rebounding edge must I haven't seen the stat, but it must be a, a, a huge lead for Redan. Uh, it just doesn't seem to me that that they're, that they're crashing the boards on the Marietta end as much as they should be. But they may be, you know, they may be physically moved out of there. Three point shot would not go for Andrews that time. Trying to follow but kept it alive. And yeah, I mean, they're just working the boards. Right. It's it's uh, the, the edge must be astounding. Oh, nice. Looking shy. Nice. And that's the first bucket of the night for Delia Brunson. And that's kind of hard to believe the way this Redan offense has been clicking. And the way they spread the ball around, usually. She averages about seven points a game. Remember, only really two double figure scorers in effect for Redan. Three if you round up. Three point shot by Eccles off the mark. And the flip side of that has pretty much been Marietta almost won and out. I mean, they, they have just right. not had the opportunities under the glass that the Redan has had here this evening. Right. But they're still running their offense. Now they're running the picket fence kind of thing over there. And inside. inside to Brunson. Nice job there. Daniels, number 50. Close well, Daniels, I'm yep. sorry. Nine points tonight for Daniels, the six-foot sophomore, 59-28. Three and a half to play. Oh, that one taken away. Nice job there by Fambro to step in front of it. She's slowing it down. She's not going to be the blur here. She's going to bring it back and set it up, and that's uh, that's probably a pretty good thing to do when you have a lead of this size. Off the rim there. You know, we saw those years when we were showing that graphic while ago of all the state champions since... 2001, as you see a bucket there by Brittany White, who lays it in, 30-second timeout on the floor. But the last three years, Redan hangs on right here. It's going to be three different champions between Collins Hill, Stevenson, and, of course, Redan. So there might be a, the tide might be turning there a little bit. We might be seeing some different programs stepping into the spotlight. Well, look, players like, like uh, Maya Moore just don't come along but about every couple of decades. Uh, you look at what she's doing for UConn, it's just, she's the best player in the world right now. Well, for complete coverage of the state GHSA basketball championships and to find out how to support sports programming on GPB, go to gpb.org backslash basketball to learn more. Again, GHSA championship info available at www.gpb.org backslash basketball. And I know a basketball guy like you can appreciate going to a site like that. And, uh, you know, all, all these games, of course, are going to be archived as well. And so really check out that GPB website. Done a lot of good work to that thing. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure I want to do that for this game. You know why? You clobbered me here, partner. You've got all four Britneys in this game straight. You did a heck of a job. You got him straight. I never got him straight. We're in the fourth quarter. Oh, coming up later on tonight, Milton and Wheeler, a pair of 24 and 7 teams, will square off for the 5A Boys Championship. That's coming up next right here live on GPB. We certainly want to encourage folks to uh, stay with us here tonight. Should be an exciting game. Two programs that uh, have a lot of uh, history uh, years back with each other there, being in the same 
region there for a while, and uh, should be a good cha state championship matchup. Mm -hmm. now, Wheeler's got a lot of size there, a lot of athletic ability, as we all know. And, of course, uh, Milton has really stepped on the scene this year and done a great job. Well, that's going to be that, – that game is fun because it is a program fully established in Wheeler with top-flight talent every year against Milton, a program that's never really been a basketball power and has some top-flight talent who are very young. They are led by sophomores. And uh, Wheeler's physical. Can the thinner Milton players hang in there? That, that should be a very good game. And you're matching one of the best coaches in the state, David Boyd of Milton. He's won so many state titles at different schools. So uh, that's one to watch, uh, no matter the score, just because it's going to tell us what direction some things are going. We saw Nia Evans a moment ago for Redan. Get another bucket, 17 points here tonight, 61-32 with a little over two minutes left. And, of course, another full slate of games tomorrow live from the Bacon Centerplex right here on GPB. Want to encourage folks to tune in. A full day of basketball. I think there's a little rain maybe in the forecast, uh, so it might be a good day to stay at home and I, I, that's enjoy a good some high school basketball. Absolutely. The more it rains, the more viable basketball is. We don't want people out on the golf course while hoops is going on. Here's a look at tomorrow's game, speaking of the Class A girls game between Wesleyan and Savannah Country Day tomorrow at 11 a.m. Of course, the single A boys will follow Whitfield Academy and Turner County at 1245. Of course, the double A girls will feature model undefeated taking on Buford 31 and 1 tomorrow at 3 p.m. Followed by the double A boys contest between Blessed Trinity and Dublin. That one at 4.45 tomorrow. And then, of course, everything wraps up with AAA Carrollton and the winner of the Baldwin-Lakeview-Fort Oglethorpe matchup. And it's going on tonight. And then, of course, Westover and the winner of South Atlanta-Columbia. Of course, that's for the AAA Boys Championship to wrap things up tomorrow at 8.45, tip time from the Macon Centerplex. I have not seen Derek Favors play uh, for South Atlanta. And perhaps tomorrow we'll get a look at him when we're down in, at the Macon uh, Metroplex. Centerplex. A lot of folks, of course, uh, have him as the uh, number one prospect in the country. Well, he, he is. Uh, uh, actually, he will win the nation of award for the outstanding high school player in the country. See that last whistle right there, and that will put Sabrina McCants at the line. And there you look at number 13, Sierra Eccles, who steps in for Marietta, and number 22, Sydney Mason, back in for Redan. And there's the big round of applause, of course, for Alicia Andrews as she goes to the bench after an absolutely great performance and particularly a, 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 a brilliant first half of basketball. And you had to wonder how this Redan team was going to come in here, especially after that emotional win last night over Parkview, 63-62, trailed in that ball game late, had a 13-1 run in the fourth quarter that propelled them into the state championship game. But they certainly came in here tonight and, and really picked up where they left off. Came they went, out to a fast start. They went to that 2-1-2 trap last night against Parkview, the one they were using so effectively here in the first half. And that's what that when they went off on the 13-1 run because it, uh, it befuddled uh, the orange from Parkey. Fambro with three more to add to her total. Just having fun out there, as are the Lady Raiders. On the other end, Sprague puts up a three-point shot, unable to hit it. With, the, uh, with a freshman like Sprague in the ballgame, you know, the opportunity for a coach, especially when it's his daughter, is to say, look, you burn this evening into your memory because you're going to be back here. Nia Evans will come out of the lineup to a good ovation right there from the Redan faithful making the trip here from Stone Mountain tonight. Number 40, Olivia Walker, six foot junior, into the ball game for Coach Rhonda Malone and the Lady Raiders. Well, I'll tell you what, Courtney Fambro did her best for last year, averaging just over eight points, but 18 here tonight. Certainly stepped up here in the state championship game, and that's great to see. And you see Ellison, Tawana Ellison, the uh, six-footer, also in the game, because sometimes, you know, in games like this, you don't know who's going to step up. You don't always have your star step up. It might be somebody else. Well, another nice thing is every kid got to play. So every one of these kids can say, hey, I played in the state championship ball game. Right. Uh, 37.8. 64-38, Redan leads it as the final seconds tick off the clock right here. Well, you want some excitement here, Dave, because think about it. 
This is an undefeated state 5A basketball team in the Redan Raiders. Undefeated is really difficult. Undefeated is something that you can, you can treasure for the rest of your life. And there's a shot there by Barnabé. And to go undefeated, you've got to go all the way through. It doesn't stop when you get to the playoffs. you got to win the state championship to ice it off right there. Hey, Fayette County came in undefeated. Yep. Finished second. Models, models undefeated. We don't know what's going to happen to them tomorrow. Right. Taking on Buford. 8.4 on the clock is all that remains. And the Redan players begin the celebration on the bench over there having some fun. And why not? They've earned it here tonight. And, and the Marietta girls don't have to feel terribly about this. They just ran into a buzzsaw. It's, it, there wasn't much they could have done to change the outcome of this game. So they're not going to have to feel too terrible. They can come back next year and, and not feel as if they were embarrassed. Walker missed from the free throw line. Final seconds off the clock right here. And that will do it. 64 to 40. Redan, your 2009 GHSA Class 5A Girls State Champions. What a job by Coach Rhonda Malone and the Lady Raiders falling short in last year's state championship game. But coming back with a vengeance this year, going a perfect 27 0 to capture the title. Redemption. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. The celebration is on for the Redan Lady Raiders who captured the 2009 5A Girls State Championship. Our very own Lisa Weiss is standing by courtside with a winning coach. Lisa. Thanks, Dave. I guess the third time is a charge. How exciting is this to finally get this one? It's, just, it's, it's indescribable. It's unbelievable. These girls have done an excellent job all year long. I mean, you know, this is something we've always talked about since last year. And this year, we stepped it up some. We did what we were supposed to do. The girls just... They, they enjoy each other. They, they listen to the coaches. I mean, what more can you ask for? This is the most exciting time, I tell you. I can't even describe it. <laughs> so is it everything you thought and more? Yes, it is. I tell you, it feels good. It really feels good. I'm so proud of these girls and just the effort that they put out there. I mean, just the support of our, our, our student body and my two coaches, best two coaches in the world. I tell you, I can't, I can't even say it. Thank you so much. Enjoy this win, Coach Malone. Dave, back to you. All right, thank you, Lisa. An emotional Coach Rhonda Malone and her Lady Raiders of Redan capture their first state championship. That's going to wrap things up for our entire GPB crew and for Lisa Weiss and for Dick Williams. I'm Dave Garner saying so long, everyone. Find out how you become, uh, can become a member of GPB. Stay with us. And then later on, 5A hoops coming up on the boys' side between Wheeler and Milton. So long, everyone. Funding for this program is provided in part by Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, the Georgia Student Finance Commission, Regions Bank, the Georgia Lottery, by viewers like you, and the Georgia High School Association who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge Dealers, State Farm, and Naturally Fresh for their support of GHSA athletic activities.